The information in this video is provided for informational and educational purposes only. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the Morale Monologue. My name is Michael Morale. Okay, so in today's video, I want to give you some updated information regarding Scholar Rock's Phase 3 clinical trial, which is now known as Sapphire. The company that I work for, BioNews Incorporated, is the parent company for SMA News Today. And SMA News Today recently published an article where they give an update with regards to this Phase 3 trial. And I want to share that information with you. I've also linked the entire article down in the description of my video. So after you watch my video, please feel free to go down and click on the link and view the entire article for yourself. It's a lot of really good information that all of us should be very excited about. Okay, so let's get started. Scholar Rock announced the full design of the upcoming Phase 3 clinical trial testing epidogromab, its experimental muscle-directed therapy for spinal muscular atrophy in children and young adults with types 2 and 3 SMA who are unable to walk. Epidogromab will be given as an add-on therapy to either Spinraza or Evrisd, two SMA disease-modifying therapies, known as DMTs, approved in the U.S. and Europe. In earlier videos, I had made the statement that epidogromab would be used in combination with Spinraza, but I wasn't sure if they would be using it with Evrisd. This article clearly states that epidogromab will be used with both Spinraza from Biogen and with Evrisd from Roche and Genentech. This is extremely exciting news for those of us that are on active treatments with either Spinraza or Evrisd. The global trial, called Sapphire, plans to enroll patients across 55 sites, including in the U.S. and Europe, and recruitment is expected to start in the upcoming months. Study startup activities are underway. Epidogromab, infused directly into the bloodstream every four weeks, is designed to increase muscle strength and function in SMA patients by selectively preventing the generation of the active form of myostatin, a protein that suppresses muscle growth. As a muscle-directed therapy, its mechanism of action is distinct from currently approved DMTs for SMA, all of which work by increasing the levels of SMN, a protein essential for motor neuron and muscle health, and whose production is impaired by SMA patients. We are encouraged and motivated by the positive results of the Topaz Phase II Proof of Concept trial, which informed the design of Sapphire to evaluate the therapeutic potential of epidogromab in SMA, said Young Chung, MD, Scholar's Chief Medical Officer. Building on the solid foundation of Topaz, our Phase III trial and the broader program are aimed at advancing the development of epidogromab toward our aspiration of transforming the lives of patients with SMA. The Phase II Topaz trial evaluated the one-year safety and effectiveness of two doses of epidogromab, 2 and 20 mg per kilogram, in 58 children and young adults, ages 2 to 21 years, with SMA type 2 or 3. Results showed that epidogromab led to improvements in motor function, as measured by the Hammersmith Functional Motor Scale Extended, known as HFMSE. Higher HFMSE scores indicate better motor abilities, and a score change of at least three points is considered clinically meaningful. Notably, the greatest increases in HFMSE scores were observed with a higher dose, 20 mg per kilogram, and among patients who were unable to walk, non-ambulatory. An exploratory post-talk analysis of 16 non-ambulatory children ages 2 to 12 on Spinraza, who were treated for one year with epidogromab at its higher dose, found a mean increase of 4.4 points in the HFMSE score, Scholar Rock reported in its release. Specifically, 81% of them had a one point or greater increase in the HFMSE score, and more than half, 56%, achieved clinically meaningful gains. Based on these findings, Sapphire's main analysis will test both the higher 20 mg per kilogram and an additional intermediate dose, 
10 milligram per kilogram of epidogramab against a placebo in up to 156 non-ambulatory children ages 2 to 12 years with SMA type 2 or 3. As an exploratory patient population, up to 48 non-ambulatory adolescents and young adults ages 13 to 21 with SMA type 2 or 3 will also be recruited and randomly assigned to either 20 mg per kilogram of epidogromab or a placebo. All participants will have to be on stable DMT for at least 10 months in the case of Biogen Spinraza and at least 6 months in the case of Roche's Evrisd prior to enrollment. Those treated with Novartis' gene therapy, Solgensma, another approved DMT for SMA, will not be eligible. As in Topaz, Sapphire's main goal will be to assess changes in HFMSC after one year of treatment. Secondary goals include the proportion of patients achieving clinically meaningful HFMSC changes and changes in upper limb function and motor development milestones. The therapy's pharmacokinetics, movement into, through, and out of the body, and pharmacodynamics, effects on the body, will also be assessed, as well as safety measures and immune reaction against the therapy. An interim analysis is planned for when at least 50% of the participants in the younger age group, 2 to 12 years, have finished the one-year treatment. After completing the SAFIRE trial, participants will have the option of enrolling in an open-label extension study in which all will receive the experimental therapy for a longer period. As of November 30th, 55 of the 57 patients who completed Topaz are still in that trial's extension study and being followed, the company noted. Recognizing that not every SMA patient will be eligible to participate in SAPHIRE, Scholar, in a letter to the community, emphasized that conducting a trial with a well-defined and similar group of individuals gives the best chance to get strong and conclusive data, which is important in seeking approval from regulatory agencies expeditiously. The company also noted that it expects to explore the use of epidogramab in patient populations not included in this trial in the future. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you got some information out of it that you can use as well. Knowing that Scholarock is taking epidogromab into this phase three clinical trial should bring a lot of excitement to those of us with SMA, and I hope you're as excited as I am. If you enjoyed this episode of the Morale Monologue, give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to the SMA News Today YouTube channel as well. We would greatly appreciate it. Remember, when you do subscribe to the channel, be sure to click on the bell icon. That way you'll be notified of any new videos that we produce. We at SMA News Today hope all of you have had a great day. Do me a favor, this upcoming week, do something for yourself that's going to make you a better person. Until next time, take care of yourself, and I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye.